Welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, I have Bryson Gray, Christian conservative artist, producer and personality. Bryson, welcome to Indisputable, how are you? I'm doing great, man, thank you for having me on. Thank you, man. So we talked a little bit about this before the show. And I mentioned to you that I'm actually good friends with Lecrae, who's a Christian artist. And I asked you, since you are a Christian entertainer or Christian artist yourself, um, had you had any contact with Lecrae? Uh, and you said to me that he's kind of lukewarm for you. Uh, and you mean that in the context of his faith belief, right? Um, yeah, and me and have had situations because I've tried to contact him. I contacted him privately before, but he denies the word of God in front of man, which is disgusting in my opinion. Got you. Um, you are a big um, anti abortion guy, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And I assume you take that from your biblical um, principles or the values you have received from the Bible. Uh, starts with that, but it's really just common sense. Even even if you don't believe in the Bible, it should be common sense to be against abortion. Okay. Uh, so let me ask you this: Are you for war? Am I for war? Correct. Um, I know. I'm against war. Take take our troops out of pretty much all of these countries and stop stop messing with other countries. That actually has some intellectual integrity. Are you also anti-death penalty? I'm becoming that way. So sometimes I struggle with it because emotionally, when you see somebody messing with little kids and stuff of that nature, you 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 want to you want to say, I don't like that. But just just to be clear, when I talk about pro-life, I'm talking about abortions. Period. So I'm talking. I'm referring to abortion. Well, that's that's the context that you would like it to only apply to. But if you utilize the phraseology pro-life. Well, now I need to understand how do you consider life in different contexts? For example, Mm -hmm. if you are a pro-life person, then I would expect you to also be pro-funding for adoption centers or pro-funding for community homes that deal with children. I was a foster child myself. So I would imagine if you're pro-life, you're also pro-life for those that are outside of the womb is my point, right? Outside well, of the womb. Well, you wanna have a conversation about outside the womb, but I'm specifically dealing with inside of the womb. So I'm dealing with abortion specifically. I'm anti-abortion, it should be illegal, very simple. Okay, because you believe life begins at conception? Uh, yes, I believe the definition of a cell is the smallest form of life by definition in biology. So then if you apply that to a human, we're talking about a human cell. So then if that's human life and you're taking it away, then obviously you shouldn't be able to do that. Let me it's- be graphic with you. Um, does sperm have a cell? Yes. Is that a human being? No, I know I, that's what I said, the smallest form of life. So if you talk about a human cell, when, when a sperm goes into the egg and it, and, okay, I'm not going through that, we all know what happens. And then when it starts growing, obviously it's doing that. And that's why you here, that's why I'm here. That's why everybody's here right now is because of that right there. So let's not play these little weird games. We know exactly what We're not playing what games, brother, okay. we're having an open <laughs> conversation. Yeah. Because if your faith belief informs you of your stance on a woman's right to choose. Let's let's be okay with challenging the conversation and I will let you speak and I speak. So let me pose this question to you. When we talk about life, we're not talking about biological function because there's a lot of biological function. Uh, we, we can spit on the ground and there's biology in the spit. You're not trying to save the spit, brother. So we're not talking about biological function. Not. We're talking about a soul being placed inside of the body and a soul being present inside of the womb. That's what we're really talking about, correct? That's what makes it life. No, uh, I made what I said very specific. That's why I said when they when when somebody releases a sperm and it comes with the egg and it starts creating life. When that's when that come together and life starts growing, period. That's a human cell. So the fact that you're taking that away and let's not act like that's when that's when most abortions happen. Most abortions happen later than that, which is more disgusting. Um, so later we start doing that. That is murder, and not only it should it should be simply illegal. No, no, I don't want no no okay. exceptions. All right, um, so what about in cases of rape? No exceptions. In cases of molestation? No exceptions. In cases of incest? No exceptions. Now, let me go back to your ideology about where life begins. 
Um, we can all agree that in the story of Adam and Eve or Ahada, that Adam was a biological entity first. And this biology that had the format of life, cells were functioning. There was a biological process because according to the text that you say informs your belief on abortion, God created Adam or God created man. So now you have your biology. But man did not become living brother, which means Adam as a biological entity according to the scripture was not living until something happened to Adam. What happened to Adam that made him a living soul? I know what you're about to say, uh, God breathed breath, breath into him. But my answer is that God know you before the womb, before you was in the womb. Okay, so you answered the question that mm -hmm. in the scripture that you base your opinion on or base your faith value on, uh, that Adam was actually a biological creature, a biological presence mm -hmm. that had the function of life. However, scripture says that is not what made him living. He did not become living until there was a respiratory function, until God breathed into Adam and the Bible says Adam thus became a living soul. So that means that Adam can exist biologically first without actually being living second. There's a huge problem with this comparison you're using. The huge problem is Adam wasn't born of a woman. He was the first mm. man created by God. Mm. And then the woman Eve was created from the rib. That's, mm -hmm. why I brought, that's why I brought the other scripture that said, I knew you even before you was in the womb. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's quite simple. One of the things God hates well, is, a, is a shedding of innocent blood. Well, let's go back to that. And uh, I appreciate the conversation, brother. You and I disagree totally on the concept here. But I appreciate the open conversation. Now, the scripture you just mentioned is actually in Jeremiah 1. And God is specifically talking about Jeremiah the prophet. And the uh, the wording is, before, before you were in the womb of your mother, I knew you, I ordained you a prophet unto the nation. Mm -hmm. So just as you utilize the scripture in the book of Genesis to apply to a one time situation, why do you not use the uh, scripture in Jeremiah to apply specifically as it is stated to a one time situation. I gave you another scripture, you ignored okay. it. Okay, what, what, what was the other one, where is it at? I said one of the six things God, God hates is the shedding of innocent blood. Well, we understand that brother and uh -huh. once again, uh, that is in reference to life. And we've already established that you can have biology without having life. That's according to the text that you read in Genesis. Are, baby, are babies in a womb as they're growing, is that not life? I is do there, not believe they are. No, I do not huh? believe that's a living huh? soul. So, so you ask me, hold on brother, you ask me a question. The answer to your question is, I do not believe an embryo is a living soul until there is a respiratory function. That's my belief. Your, your belief can be different than mine. So as, as they're growing and as they're getting basically food from the mother and getting mm -hmm. everything from the mother, as so they can grow, you tell mm -hmm. me that is not a living thing. No, I do not believe that's a living soul. So I do believe it has the biology or the biological processes of life, uh, just as uh, your spit does or other elements connected to your body. But I do not believe it is an actual living soul. That is what I believe. Yes, Let me take speak. you to a policy. Um, you Can do I realize. Time real quick, just real quick. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, when you use a spit, it's very interesting, and you're using the term "living soul" instead, uh, mm -hmm. a soul as, 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 instead of instead of life. I, I, I see why you're using mm -hmm. that. But we talk about spit. Spit is a totally different ball game because a spit is not growing. It's not. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not growing. It's not getting bigger. It's not learning how to mm -hmm. do things. It's not functioning that way. Yeah, the spit okay. is obviously because spit All is right. obviously not life. I, I got you, brother. Uh, and you have your belief, and I respect your belief and your value system. Um, so you're you're a guy. You want to see less abortions happen in America. Do you support Republicans politically? I'm a conservative. Republicans are starting to go to spread the left, so they have pissed okay. me off as a. But late. you do support conservatives that are, I guess, anti-abortion, right? Or anti-woman's right to choose. You support them. I support that specific policy. Okay. Um, let me read to you some actual data. Now, this is not a projection. This is what has already happened. Uh, during the last 30 years, the last 30 years, that's a long time, brother. 
the most dramatic decrease in abortion rates in America has happened under Democratic presidents, not Republican presidents. Republican or conservative presidents have either kept it the same or increased the number of actual abortions in the United States. Let me read some stats. Per 1,000 women, Reagan from 1981 to 1989 had the number at 24 per 1,000. This was rates per every 1,000 women, according to the CDC. H.W. Bush had it at 24, which kept it steady. Clinton had it at 16.2, which dropped it. Bush had it at 16 as well. And then President Obama gets in and he dramatically decreases it to 11. All right, so the most dramatic and the only decreases of actual abortion rates in the United States of America happen under Democratic presidents, which would mean if you're considering saving more lives, if you believe that abortions or abortion is murder, then you have to consider voting for a Democrat and not a Republican because under conservatives, the abortion rate actually increases and under Democrats, it actually decreases. Well, none, none of them statutes brought up affects me at all because, like I've made clear multiple times, I want it illegal, meaning it shouldn't happen. Period. So mm-hmm. them stats has has no effect on me. All right, you do realize how ridiculous it sounds when you say you want a person who was raped to be forced to have a child. You want a a girl, a child who was molested, to be forced to have a baby. You realize how how dumb as hell that sounds, right? Well, it wasn't the baby that raped that person, so I, I don't think that I don't think that's an exception. Say that again. The the baby the baby that's growing inside of you didn't okay. rape you didn't molest you. Uh, the man hopefully is in jail and or yeah. dead. Uh, but wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. So you want that person punished for taking away the choice of another individual, but you don't want that individual to have a choice as it relates to carrying. The embryo into term. No, incorrect. I want that person to be punished for mm. raping and or molesting. Mm. I know a lot of times people try to use blanket terms like a choice, so you can use that in another place. Mm. But no, I'm specifically talking about raping and molesting because you mm. said those words. This is fascinating. So, uh, and what's interesting, uh, Bryson, is that there's a policy, or at least it existed temporarily in the state of Alabama. Um, Alabama passed a law, and I'm sure you are very happy about this law until the court overturned it, uh, that said even in cases of rape, even in cases of rape, um, abortion would still be illegal in Alabama. That law did get overturned, but keep in mind, it did get passed. Um, And literally in Alabama, a person would get more time for aborting uh, the fetus than what the rapist would get for raping the woman. Does that make sense to you? No, I don't agree with that last aspect. Okay. Obviously, obviously, the person that raped the woman needs to get life. Any person that rapes somebody should get life in prison. But um, I do like the fact that they that they did that law outside of hmm. that last part. Do you have children? Uh, no, but I will. I have three siblings. You have sisters? Uh, I have a little sister, correct. You ever thought if somebody raped your little sister, you wouldn't want her to have the child of the rapist? Or at least- nope. Have my, her? No, nope, my sister. She 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 will have the child because you you will force her to have it. Nope, because she was a Bible believing Christian like me, and she doesn't believe in abortion. So if your sister, God forbid, was raped, we can we can talk to her. She's upstairs. You you would well. I can have her on the show another time. I'm I'm talking to you today. Okay. Um, you would you would counsel her to not have an abortion, but to in fact have the child of the rapist. I already, I already know she would have it, uh, but I will tell her you better not get no abortion. All three, I was like, do, do not get no abortion. I tell everybody that who even thinks about having an abortion. I talk to people in my DMs sometimes, think about having an abortion, um, but it's never, it's, it's never really based on rape. We, we, we argue on something that's very rare. The majority of cases are convenience. Women just want convenience because women want to be out here having sex with who knows what, we know, and who nobody knows, and mm-hmm. then they want to get an abortion. So it's usually out of convenience, but you haven't brought that up once. Hmm. And that's because uh, women have talked to you and told you this. Uh, it's just it's, it's just per statistics. Every, every statistics rape is like less than two percent of mm-hmm. abortions. Why do you think the number of abortions actually decreases under Democrats and typically increases or stays the same under Republicans? Why do you think that that is? Uh, g- genuinely, I do not know. But do what you I care? Do, uh, 
No, because I want to be illegal. So what I do know is- <laughs> So you don't you care make- about the actual um, fetuses or the embryo. You don't care about that. You just care about this one damn law. You don't care about the actual uh, preserving of life. You don't care what the what the number is. You just care about this one issue that that is a law that you want to see passed. You don't care what the actual numbers are. And correct, sir. I'm not saying it's not a positive mm-hmm. if abortions were decreased. But what I do know, and the reason I said I don't care, is what I do know mm-hmm. is if it was illegal, dim numbers would decrease significantly because you would have okay. to you have to take a no, risk to go get an abortion. Illegally. That, that's another untrue uh, statement. So many uh, what from you, what illegal. you will have, well, we do have some stats of illegal abortions that led to the death of uh, the mother uh, because they were utilizing clothes hangers and people created a black market system so that you can go and seek these abortions. The bottom line is, brother, uh, that women have had this choice legally or illegally. Uh, and instead of focusing on the uh, on the policy that you're trying to push, which is completely adversarial to any common sense known to man, uh, to push that kind of ideology without respecting a woman's right to choose, especially in situations that are egregious as rape. Brother, I'm disappointed. But I do believe in a woman's right to choose. Because in most cases, it's mm-hmm. convenience. She can make that choice in the bedroom, just like she mm-hmm. make every other choice in her life. So once you make that choice in the bedroom, you have to deal with you a grown adult woman yeah. in most cases. You need to deal with what you just did. So don't you can't just get rid of your responsibilities and, right. and take away a life because of you convenience. Stop being a little thought. That's what they are to you. Their thoughts to you. Yeah, promiscuous women. Correct. Yeah, you got you got a woman. Yes, I have a girlfriend. Yep. Okay, you, you and you don't have children. No, nope, but I'm just just real quick. My girlfriend was uh, actually adopted at two weeks years old, and uh, and, and she was raised by wonderful parents, uh, which is another reason why you like I'm very I'm very pro life. I was already pro life, but just that alone, and she she's a very intelligent woman. And her, I'm and her glad mother you said that. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you said that. I was a foster child myself. Um, do you advocate for stronger policies to make sure foster children have? access to higher education, to opportunities in the marketplace, job training skills, etc. Do you advocate for that? Job training skills, yes. Uh, I'm not a fan of these universities. I think people need to homeschool their oh, kids. Oh, that's a shock. You're not a fan of college. Okay, that's a shock. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, just school, right. school, school period, not just college. It's, it's, it's public school system, private school system. No matter what okay. it is, all they're doing is indoctrinating our children. That's why a lot of liberals, they claim <laughs> they claim that they didn't become liberals until they left college. I got you, man. That, that's just, I mean, this has been, this has been uh, I don't know, interesting. I can say <laughs> that. Um, so are you a big MAGA guy? Or are you a Trumpite? Uh, I'm not a, I'm gonna talk about Trump bite because I'm God first, obviously. Uh, but mm-hmm. I do support, I do support Trump. Uh, but yeah. right now, right now I'm still focused on 2020, not really worried about 2024. I'm surprised we didn't get to the LGBT what, stuff. But you know, make- it's, it, wait a minute, it's 2021 though, brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the election, the election was obviously uh, stolen, in my opinion. <laughs> I thought, I thought we have. Well, can I, well, you, you're laughing, but why? Yeah, they, I'm why, laughing at you. You're absolutely well, correct. Why, you called why, out. That's why, the why, first true thing you said on this show. Why are they trying to block audits? Okay, um, <laughs> brother, what's really interesting about all of this is that the places that are having audits, uh, the audits are not being blocked. Georgia has had multiple audits, Arkansas has had multiple audits. Um, a lot of states had audits, but you also have judges that were appointed by Donald Trump who said to these cases of election fraud, these are frivolous cases. So you mean to tell me that judges appointed by Trump himself decided to engage in a massive conspiracy to steal the election from Donald Trump. And this included not only judges, but also all of the Republican governors, all of the White House staff, and including Mike Pence himself. You think it was that kind of massive cover up, correct? Well, if you look at what the judges he appointed did, and granted, I do agree with you that he, in my opinion, uh, Trump sometimes his his judgment of character is a little off. But um, a little off. <laughs> yeah, but 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 the judges the judges he appointed nobody did even give a, a real investigation into the cases. And like I said, I was surprised we didn't. I, I was surprised we didn't. I mean, it's true. I was surprised we didn't even. Look, I was surprised we didn't get to the LGBT stuff because you will be more shocked at, at my views on that. Okay. Um. Uh, what's your and, and we got like two minutes, man. Mm-hmm. You, you wanted to say something about 
uh, LGBTQ uh, rights. Well, and censorship, we didn't get to that. But of course, I want same-sex marriage illegal, common sense. Uh, but also, as far as censorship, social media companies, uh, especially the ones that are publicly traded, shouldn't have these like like these Section 230 immunity uh, things surrounding them. Because my music just got banned on some of the biggest platforms in the country as far as Spotify and SoundCloud. Yeah. And how can you ban my music but still have music about murder? And I don't Well, let, let, me, let me tell you why private companies can do that and it is not antithetical to the Constitution. Your freedom of speech is a freedom that does have restrictions. Now remember, your freedom of speech basically says the government cannot do anything to uh, intrude on that freedom. Right, or penalize you for having said freedom when you exercise that freedom. But private companies, for example, TYT is a private company. Indisputable is a show at this private company. If I wanted you to be off my show, I could just cut your mic. I haven't violated your constitutional rights. Maybe I've offended you, brother, but I have not violated your constitutional rights. So when you make a constitutional argument, I didn't. Because of a private company, what they decide to do with your music, that that doesn't equate. It's not a constitutional I did, issue. I did. You you brought up constitution. I said nothing about the constitution. So uh, you're just saying private companies should do what you want them to do. No, now. incorrect. But okay. if you're gonna <clears throat> if you're gonna ban my music, okay, you have to ban other music similar to that. Like well, they Eminem. don't have to, brother. Like, they they oh, don't. And, and, and that this is where we get into the they're, thing. They're not Christians like you, brother. Oh no, no. And now this 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 is the argument. Now my argument is discrimination, uh -huh. right? Y'all like that ah, word? Ah, oh, just okay, discrimination. I got. But it. It, it is discrimination. I can prove it's discrimination right. by emails, and I can pull up a thousand popular songs. And, that they and they're discriminating know. against your lyrics. Yes, they are. Ah, got gotcha, you, man. All right. This make is my belief system, correct? Got gotcha, you, man. Well, you continue that fight, brother. Do you know? Do you? All right. I appreciate you being on Indisputable. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir.